people. And Aries is the kind of sign that I think does kind of like to play jokes on people. What do kids do? They do things like TPing the trees, you know? What? <laughs> they take rolls of toilet paper and oh. go through the woods and, you know, make sure the trees are all wrapped up. Go, go on, because I'm thinking, I, I've got to formulate my question here. I'm thinking of Halloween and, and April and October. The beginning, the end. Well, the nature of all of these uh, Earth holidays, so to speak, and really April 1st, I think, probably correlates to the vernal equinox, which is, you know, what we just had. Um, so it's, it's an Earth-based idea. It's what, what is happening with the Earth and what is happening. There's stuff coming up out of the ground. It's new beginnings. There's, you know, you look around in nature and you can just kind of feel the energy ready to burst out of it. Um, the other things that kids do are uh, saran wrapping the john. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've even known some adults to do that, actually. <laughs> Short sheet the beds. Exactly, you got it. Tear right through two hundred dollars sheets if you were Steven Spielberg. But uh, <laughs> uh, is you know th this whole idea of April first, and you you mentioned the tarot card, the fool. And I guess there are a lot of people out there who wonder, you know, if you call um, a psychic, and I assume psych, do astrologers use tarot cards as much as so-called psychics? Well, I think the idea, the way tarot cards work, it's a tool very much like what I do with the stars is a tool. And basically what you're doing is you're allowing your imagination and your intuition to wander by looking at the symbolism on the card. Um, there isn't anything really... Um, uh, too dangerous about this, you know. I mean, the words magical, mystical, all of those kind of things, the connotation can be sometimes that people are a little fearful of these, these ideas, but um, they're, that's because of the unknown. There's always a fear of the unknown. But the tarot card was originally, um, as much as we know, uh, it came into being um, in the Middle Ages, about the time of the Crusades. And a lot of the images on the tarot pack relate to um, some of the things that the Crusades, the Crusaders, um, you know, found in the Middle East when they were there. And what was so interesting about that time to me was that this was really the first time that the three major religions were kind of focused in one place, um, you know, in, in the Holy Land and Islam, um, uh, Buddhism, no, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, um, you know, were focused at that time, but there was a lot of influence from the, the Far East as well with uh, with Buddhism yeah. and Lao, Lao Se, Se Chung or whatever. What? <laughs> the, the study of the Tao. The, you the know, Taoists. The Taoists, yes. Okay. Now, is there any significance to the fact that Passover, Good Friday, and Easter, I mean, yesterday you had Palm Sunday, uh, Wednesday night begins Passover, Friday is Good Friday, then next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Any connection to Oh, yes, it's all about this, this same idea. I mean, the thing is that each tradition has its own way of expressing itself, and I think that's really important. It's kind of like, in a way, we have to have our own fingerprints. We have to have our own signatures. We have to have, you know, ideas that are unique to us and that's very important to do but at the same time we also have to recognize that there are times when there are things that that are very very similar in the way that we all work together and one of those i think is the earth we all live on the earth so we have to honor the earth we have to honor the traditions that are inherent in the earth and i think that are the origins of most of these traditions judaism christianity um islam they all honored this because uh, they, the, the roots of their tradition all come from the early belief systems when they were really working with the cycles of the earth. And this particular time of the year coincides with the idea of mating, with therefore rabbits, you know, <laughs> new beginnings. <laughs> I think the reason why rabbits... <laughs> <laughs> rabbits are so important, um, you know, at Easter and so on, is because, you know, one of the things that we think about with rabbits is that they're kind of at it a lot, um, you know. I, th I thought they brought Easter eggs and jelly beans. Well, they do, but inherent in the nature of, of rabbits is, is something that, the, you know, you say someone breeds like rabbits, yeah. you know, it's, it's something that, that there's kind of this imagery that we have about them, and really there's something kind of fun about it. Um, you know, sometimes it can be said in a derogatory sense, but 
I think, you know, again, it's this idea of looking at things in, in the half full or half empty point of view, and I choose to look at it as being a positive thing, that people are feeling more like they want to get out. They want to, um, you know, have fun. They want to, you know, play with each other. Um, and, you know, flirting and that kind of thing is, is a part of it. And even with the, the nature, um, Mike, you might have to help me a bit with the um, Judaism, but with Christianity, the idea of, you know, Christ's resurrection, the whole thing is about rebirth. Yes, he dies, and it's, it's a tragic, horrible thing, but what happens really is, and which is why Easter, or this time of the year, is my favorite holiday, because there's rebirth. And I think there's well, some... The, the tradition of Passover, by the way, we're talking to Mary Michelle. If you have a call for her about astrology, 241-1310 is the number to call, 241-1310. Um, we, we talk about the freedom from slavery, which in its own way, I guess, would be a, a rebirth. And the thing about Judaism with the Passover Seder, and when you read the Haggadah, uh, you are basically transmitting history, never forgetting it, and passing it along to future generations. And then the four questions that are asked, why is this day different? Um, it's, it has nothing to do with the seasons, I don't think. Um, I mean, w with the unleavened bread, things like that. And when you have to dip uh, your, your parsley into salt water to remember the affliction. And then the, uh, the another symbolism, uh, dealing with the uh, mortar uh, that was used to build the uh, pyramids and things like that. And then that that is what, to me, Passover is all about. It's not quite the same thing, but it is, uh, it's a rebirth in a way because we are reliving and moving from point A to point B. Right, and I think the thing is that, you know, I, I, even the Jews, it was a time that they traveled. Wasn't there a travel going along certainly with it? certainly was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they, they spent 40 years in the deserts. Right. When, um, they and what happens in the spring is it's when you're able to travel again. You know, the winter is the time that you kind of hole up and hibernate, and the spring is when you get ready to, to move on into new directions. Of course, I'm not quite sure in that part of the world whether it was actually, um, if it ever got that cold. It can get cold in yeah. the Middle East. Let me let me tell you. Yes, it can. We're talking to Mary Michelle, and uh, we'll be taking your calls at 241-1310, just a couple of seconds away. 241-1310 for Mary Michelle, back in two minutes. Katona Rexall Pharmacy, a legend pharmacy. Your one-stop shopping pharmacy next to the Katona Post Office. Owners Frank and Lou offer warm, friendly service that sets them apart from all others. Of course, Katona Pharmacy offers everyday low prices on prescriptions, a nickel copy fax, service and is an authorized Western Union agency. Ladies, get ready for spring with Revlon Cosmetics, featuring a special buy two products and get one mascara or age-defying makeup free. And for the family, a special on photo enlargements, getting two of either 5x7s for $1.99 or 8x10s for $3.99. For Easter, come see our huge selection of Russell Stover, Whitman's, and Cadbury candy eggs, bunnies, and baskets, as well as helium balloons for all occasions and Carlton Car and gift wrap. Katona Pharmacy, your one-stop shopping pharmacy next to the Katona Post Office. And we're going to be getting to Lillian, who is calling from Yorktown just about a minute away here at WVIP. We're talking to Mary Michelle, taking your calls on astrology at 241-1310. Lillian will be the first caller in one minute. Do you hear the people say, Lost in the valley of the night? Their choice was simple. This night to live in the quiet rage that is despair, or die in the struggle to alter destiny. Their musical is Les Miserables. They pursued a better world even to the edge of doom, and then beyond. Finding it was their victory. Les Miserables is their musical. The world's most popular musical at the Imperial Theater. Call Telecharge 212-239-6200 for tickets. Les Miserables celebrating its 10th anniversary year on Broadway. For tickets, call Telecharge 1212-239-6200. All right, let's say good morning to Lillian. You're on the phone with Mary Michelle. Your date of birth is uh, September 25th, 1931. Lillian, you're on with Mary Michelle. Good morning, Lillian. Good morning. Did you have a particular question? 
Well, with the springtime coming and everything, I'm left with a lot of old problems and unhappiness, and I just wondered how things look for the future. Okay. You have the sun in Libra, um, the first day of Libra. You have the moon in Pisces, Mercury in Virgo, Venus in Libra. Um, are these, these problems that are particularly preoccupying you having to do with relationship problems? Yes. Yeah. Are you married? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, whenever the sun is in the sign of Aries, which is where it is right now, it's the opposite of your sun sign. Um, your sun is in, in, in Libra, and also Venus, the planet of love, is there. So, um, in general, Libra is a sign that, you know, tends to want to make relationships work with people and overcompensates and is very diplomatic. And, you know, generally we really need Libras in life to, to smooth over things. But there does come a time when it is terribly difficult for Libras to, you know, continue to do that because what happens is that they, they need some attention themselves. They need to have things focused on themselves. And when the sun is in the sign of Aries, it's like everybody is demanding your time more than you are able to spend any time, you know, examining what you need and what you want. Um, with the moon in Pisces, um, this has also been, for the last couple of years, a time where your emotional needs probably haven't been met too well. Now, this is going to change very soon. Uh, April 7th, the planet Saturn moves on, so you'll have less of a problem concerning those, those issues of your emotional needs being met. But if you can just kind of carry through the month of April and realize that you're entitled to your opinion and your sense of being and so on and not give way to someone else's, you know, constant barrage of need of attention, um, you know, I think that that's good. If you can just kind of wait through until about the 20th of April. I've been waiting so long. I could wait a little longer. You, uh, many things you've said are so true of me. And I think my time should be coming soon. I really need it. It will. It's coming. Definitely. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, thank, thank you for calling. Let's get to our next caller. Linda is calling from Somers. Date of birth is September 10th, 1959. September 10th, 1959. Linda, good morning. You're on with Mary Michelle. Good morning, Mary. Hi, Linda. How are you? Fine, thank you. Did you have a particular question? Uh, yeah, my house is up for sale right now. Uh-huh. trying to move to the West Coast. And, um, I wanted to know if you see anything for me selling my house. Uh, this is a very good time for you to make this kind of a move. Has this been a long time coming? Um, no, we went uh, last September to the West Coast and we decided that's where we wanted to go and we just put our house up for sale in January. Well, you have a lot of planets in Virgo. You have the Sun in Virgo, as you know, and you have um, Mercury in Virgo, you have Venus in Virgo, you have Mars in Libra, you have the Moon in Capricorn. The Moon, you know, is our daily routines and rituals and real estate. Um, Jupiter's in Capricorn, it's, you know, it's a terribly good time for being able to sell real estate. You know, I think over the next three weeks is a time that you should be actively showing the house. But if it doesn't sell before the 5th of May, there might be a little bit of a stop uh, from the 5th of May through like the 25th of May. So there is a little bit of a, of a you know, window there where it might be more difficult. But in general, this is a very good year for you financially, real estate wise, anything to do with tangible material things. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Okay, thank you for calling. Um, you and I had noticed that uh, later on this week there is a lunar equinox. Is that correct? Eclipse. 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 Okay, <laughs> not equinox, eclipse. A lunar eclipse. You'll eclipse your equinox or whatever. Exactly. Um, Significance. Uh, By the way, we have an open line at 241-1310 for Mary Michelle. Go ahead. Eclipses in general, um, just so you know, um, eclipses, lunar eclipses are always at the full moon. So what you have to think about with a lunar eclipse is it's in a full moon magnified. So all of that um, frustration or tension or culmination that happens at the full moon gets, you know, pushed to a, to a much higher level. It's, it's much more um, intense. We have also this month um, at the new moon, which is when solar eclipses are, uh, we have which is the 17th of April, we, we have a solar eclipse, and that's in the sign of Aries. This one, the lunar eclipse, is in the sign of Libra. Um, 
so really what this means is that we're having, you know, your, your relationships in general are going to be under a microscope. Anybody that is having difficulty in their relationships or people that are having a, a better time with their relationships, it's going to come to a head tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. Um, it, you know, depending on what you have to think about with, with eclipses is, and to really get the benefit of them, you have to know your chart a little bit better. So the only place that I can talk about it is my own chart. And I have uh, Neptune, the planet Neptune, the planet of illusion and dreams and imagination, and also where we get the most disillusioned. I have Neptune. Um, actually, I'm part of a generation, so it'll probably be people that are born... What, what, what is part of a generation? Well, Neptune is a slow-moving planet. It moves very slowly. So, you know, 15 degrees of Libra, which is where this eclipse is happening, um, is probably going to affect quite a large group of people, um, from, let's say, people that were born in 1948 through people that were born in 1952. Um, and that group of people is going to have, you know, they might uh, want to go out and party a little excessively, or they may want to go and meditate more, or they may be really working more and more on their relationships, um, or just searching. It's a time of searching and, and perhaps not verbally realizing it. Okay. Uh, we have an open line at 241-1310. We're going to get to Kathy just a couple of seconds away here on uh, Meet the VIPs with Mary Michelle. Money sense. It's something we all need, especially when it comes to investing and planning for retirement or protecting assets and income. Money sense is what we have every Wednesday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Certified financial planner Bob Reby offering a full hour of timely financial news, information, and opinion. It's live, it's local, and it could be the most important hour of your week. Money sense with Bob Reby every Wednesday morning at 9 on WVIP. All right, let's get back to the phones. We do have an open line at 241-1310. Kathy has been waiting very patiently, calling from Mohegan Lake. Date of birth is June 9th, 1961. Kathy, you're on with Mary Michelle. Hi, Kathy. Did you have a particular question? Uh, yes, I do. Um, we're thinking of moving down uh, south um, in a few months and wondering if it's going to be a good move for us or a not such, such a good move. Okay. Um, 6961. You were born with the sun in Gemini, as I'm sure you know, and the moon in Taurus. Um, I've said this often, and I think you may have heard me um, talk about the fact that the moon in Taurus is the best place for the moon. Wherever we, whenever the moon is in Taurus, we get what we need. The person that has the moon in Taurus gets what they need. So in general, in terms of your financial uh, material sense of comfort and security and stuff, you tend to usually get what you need. Um, Mercury in Cancer, uh, Venus in Taurus. So you have a Moon-Venus conjunction. That's very attractive. What sign is your husband? Taurus. Perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. You have, you know, you're very, very supportive of him. Is this having to do with his work? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, with all this Earth energy, he's a Taurus. You've got the Moon-Venus in Taurus. It's about, um, you have Saturn in Capricorn. Pluto and Virgo. You've got a lot of Earth oriented. And all this year, the planet Jupiter is in the sign of, of Capricorn, which is an Earth sign. So it's a good time for your material decisions, whatever material um, security, money, real estate, that kind of thing. It's, it's a good time to make that decision. Um, the sign of Gemini throughout this month uh, it's it's probably go you're going to have more um, enthusiasm about it. Come May, you might have a little less enthusiasm about it. When are you thinking of moving? Um, in June. In June. Well, you know that's a good time. That's a very good time to move. Um, what what are, you, are do you have any feelings of of the fact that it's not going to work out? I mean, what are your worries about it? We're just worried that you know we've lived in New York all our lives that it's just such a big move. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a time of new beginnings, you know, and I think that sometimes we, we have to make those, those choices. We have to kind of um, take risks. The Fool, the card that I was talking about this morning, the tarot card, it's, he's standing on the edge of a precipice. He is getting ready to make that leap into the unknown, and it is a scary thing. But if you don't do it, you never get anywhere. So I think it's a good thing to be doing. You know, there is luck, certainly around your material, um, you know, uh, world this year, so don't worry about the money end of it. 
Okay, terrific. Thanks for calling. Okay, thank you for calling. Now, I have a question for you. Um, here is a lady that is thinking of moving down south. Uh, we had another one who is moving out to the west coast or wanting to. Does the astrological chart that you would look at if you were going to do a full-blown whatever, what do you call it, a reading? I don't know. Reading, yeah. Reading. Does it matter where somebody is born as it does? Okay, you're, you're, sh you're, you're nodding your head. Um, so people who are born on the East Coast on one day, people on the West Coast who were, who were, who were born out on the West Coast, would, would they have a completely different uh, type of, of outlook, or is it somewhat the same with minor variations? Well, really what happens is that when you, when you move from the place that you were born, um, everything shifts in the chart, not the planets or the, you know, the signs that the planets are in, but the houses, which I think uh, you've heard me talk about before, so that when you look at this round pie, this round circle, the, the 12 parts that is, is split up into, the planets will move from one house to the next, and that will give a different um, interpretation to the way the person will adjust to that particular geographic location, which is one of the reasons that people go on what they, we call solar return journeys. Um, a solar return journey is when you come back to the exact moment of your birth, but you decide to do it in another place on your birthday. Wait, 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 wait. Come back and say that again. Well, you're, you know, every year um, the sun will be in the constellation of the place that you were born, um, perhaps not exactly at the same time or the same day as the day that you were born, but it will come back to that same place. So if you were born with the sun at 10 degrees of Gemini, 39 seconds, uh, it will come back to that place. This is sidereal time that I'm talking you, about. You got me all confused now. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll try to make it simpler. Um, Okay, well, we don't deal with regular time in astrology. We, we, or what we know is time. We deal with a more scientific, if you would, kind of time, uh, because the day has 24 hours and 10 seconds. Um, and when you do a solar return journey, you're using that kind of time, and you're pinpointing the time that you were born, and you're going to another location so that you can deal with issues in a way that you might not uh, deal with if you just stay where you are and are unconscious of the fact. Your birthday is about becoming awake, about becoming a conscious again. You're coming into the body. You're coming into new beginnings. It's a rebirth. So it's very much in keeping with what we're talking about today in the sign of Aries, springtime, uh, the different traditional, uh, you know, fest festivities that mm -hmm. happen at this time of the year. Actually, in the uh, Jewish religion, it is called a festival. So it's very true. Mm -hmm. All right, we're talking to Mary Michelle. If you have a question, 241-1310. We're going to get to Rita in one minute. Are you thinking of making a dramatic change in your home? Beauty, elegance, and simple efficiency to any of your rooms? There's a simple solution, and you'll find it at Champion Tile. Here in the neighborhood, conveniently located across from the post office in downtown Bedford Hills. Champion Tile has a huge selection of Saloni ceramic tile from Spain, century shower and tub enclosures, and the finest imported tiles from Italy for your individual taste and all under one roof. Ceramic tile not only adds beauty to any room, but nothing compares with their strength and durability. And you know, of course, they're so easy to clean and maintain. Champion Tile has one of the largest supplies of Italian and Spanish ceramic tiles in the entire area, and hundreds of decorative borders as well, and what's more, at prices that can't be beat. It's Champion Tile, beyond all others, Champion Selection for neighborhood service, for savings without equal. And for your convenience, Champion Tile is nearby in downtown Bedford Hills, across from the post office. For your tile, simply dial 666-2828 for Champion Tile. 9.33, and to Anne in Mohegan Lake, please hold on. We're going to get to you right after we talk to Rita. Rita, you're on with Mary Michelle. Date of birth is April 11th, 1937. Rita is calling from Bedford Hills. Good morning. Good morning, Rita. Good morning. Did you have a particular question? Yes. Uh, again, we're into this moving thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm moving down south. I've had three different dates to leave, and something has come up every time. Oh. I'm wondering if someone is trying to tell me I should stay here. <laughs> Okay. You have the sun in Aries, the moon in Taurus. Again, the moon in Taurus, you get what you need. Um, it will come to you. Mercury in Taurus, Venus in Taurus, 
Jupiter and Capricorn, you know, you have a lot of, um, however things turn out this year for you in terms of your move, um, it's going to be very beneficial. It's going to work well for you. Um, you have had, particularly in the last few weeks, a particularly difficult um, transit. The planet Saturn, you you are what we call, you're, you are going through what we call the second Saturn return. Um, it started about two and a half years ago. The first Saturn return is in our early, late 20s, early 30s. And the second one is, you know, more or less the age you are now. So what you have been doing really, the Saturn return is about structuring our lives um, for how we're going to live the next 30 years of our lives so, until Saturn again comes back to its own place in your chart. So you are, you are really setting up the parameters now for how you're going to exist for the, you know, the next long, rather long period of time. But oftentimes when we set up these boundaries, it's a very, very frustrating experience. And it's been particularly intense in the last couple of weeks. Has this move thing been, been altered in the last couple of weeks? Uh, yes, it has. I had a date to leave uh, the 28th of March, mm -hmm. and my next date was for the 3rd of April. And I've had car problems. Right. Um, it's you're just having the last little bit of this uh, this Saturn, uh, you know, in in 29 degrees of Pisces. It's going to it's going to go over. It's going to move. You'll you'll definitely be out of here by the 7th of April. Okay. Okay. Very much. And Thanks. we're gonna hate to see you go. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mike. Okay, you have a good one though. All right, 9:35 is the time at WVIP. On line three is Ann calling from Mohegan Lake. Date of birth, uh, December 29th, 1951. Ann, good morning. You're on with Mary Michelle. Mary Michelle. Good morning. Did you have a particular question? No, uh, just in general, my love life, uh, work, and stuff like that. Okay. Um. Let's see, 12, my book's a little messy here, <laughs> 12, 29, 51, okay. Uh, sun in Capricorn, moon in Capricorn, you were born at the new moon. Um, this is, you know, this gives you a lot of focus, a lot of direction, and particularly the sign Capricorn, you know, which is, is, a, is a very, it's a cardinal sign, it's a leadership sign, it's about business. Did you, do you have your own business? No. Have you ever? Right at this moment. Have you, though? Uh, no, not my own business, but I'm thinking about it. Yeah. You're somebody that really needs to, to have your own business. I mean, you're a very good uh, administrator. Uh, you, you're good at managing people. Um, and you're, you know, as a rule, not too good with authority figures because you're an authority yourself. Oh, you're right on the head with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think that uh, what kind of work do you do? Uh, well, right now I'm disabled and I'm not working, but uh, I drove a school bus for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just looking for my niche now in life. Right. Well, you know, Capricorn always deals with very tangible things. Capricorn is an earth sign. So when you think about the things that you like to do, um, if you can think about it in that kind of a, of a, a way of thinking, um, you know, something like real estate is the first thing that we think about with Capricorn. You know, they, they're good at, you know, either construction or, um, you know, uh, buying and selling real estate or renting real estate. You know, if you wanted to be the, like a manager of a, of, a, of a shopping center where people are moving, you know, keep, keepers are coming in and out or managing a shopping center, that kind of thing. Um, you know, this would be something that would be, you know, a kind of a Capricorn thing. Um, you have Mercury in Sagittarius, so there's, you know, there's a strong philosophic bent to the way that you think. Uh, what are the things that you have been thinking about that you think you might like to do? Uh, I haven't really thought of anything in particular other than doing something on my own because I, I do like uh, taking charge and uh, being organized and, you know, just uh my true capricorn self <laughs> right was it your knees that were affected your you said you were physically disabled my knees and my hips i've got arthritis in every place uh-huh 
Well, you know, really, um, this problem took a long time coming, but it kind of peaked in 91, and, you know, you're healing yourself now, and you're ready to go, go on to the next phase. So certainly with your physical, your physical life, you're, you're doing much, much better. Um, I can't say exactly, you know, this is something that, you know, you have to make the decision. I can only say that any kind of a managerial position would be good for you. Um, you know, I think obviously if you drove a school bus, you want to work with people. You're someone that's good with people and children particularly. So you might want to start a daycare center or, or, you know, manage a daycare center. Maybe not running after the children, but, you know, getting other people to help you with that. You're right. As far as 91, as when my knees started giving out, uh, what about my love life? <laughs> Well, you know, this is a very lucky year for you. So in general, um, I think you just have to get out more. You have to make more of a, you have to allow yourself to be, uh, to, to have things come to you. Um, the planet Jupiter is in Capricorn. It's helping you. Um,